right now joining us is uh, the, the head honcho over there at Haven of Rest Ministries and in as much house, Daniel Jones. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Tim. I haven't seen you in a little bit there. It's uh, looking a lot different outside right now than it does when we do the roof sit in June. <laughs> yeah, roof sit is a nice steamy day, but yeah, a little chilly out there today. Yeah, a little bit. I'm glad we're not up there on a roof, but uh, oh, the, the mission does go on and uh, just, uh, well, just because we have a roof sit in June, that helps, but uh, it's an ongoing process for you guys at uh, Haven of Rest and in this much house. Why don't you Give people uh, an idea of some of the things that you're doing for this community and why it's so important that we have your organization here. Well, you know, we serve as Calhoun County's emergency homeless shelter. And why are we important? I mean, imagine spending the night outside last night in 25 degree weather um, as a homeless person. It's just not uh, survivable in many cases. So we provide that shelter, we provide that food and an opportunity for people to turn their lives around. It's emergency shelter, just what it sounds like. 30 to 60 days, um, get in and start working with one of our case managers. And, you know, I always come out and speak. And when I say homelessness is really just a symptom of the problem in many, many cases, you're either dealing with an underlying problem of either a physical disability or a mental health challenge or substance abuse addiction or maybe a combination of a couple of those factors. So we're trying to reach through uh, and really treat those root causes of what's what's creating homelessness in our community. You know, that's a challenge. It goes on, and like you say, in wintertime, it goes on all year round. Here we are, and our utility bills are going up just like everybody else's, so it's that time of year to kind of reach out to the community and say, hey, we need your support. Yeah, I, I like to always say it. it's a, it's a measure of the and how good a community is, how well they take care of its most vulnerable citizens. Yeah, and most vulnerable kind of really it describes the population we serve. That's a lot of women and children. Odds are if you're talking about a homeless person in Calhoun County, <clears throat> excuse me, you're talking about a woman with children. So we see a more uh, statistically more women and children than we do single guys coming around. Sure, and, and I, you know, I'm kind of a student of history and it it intrigues me to look back on on things, you know, what they cost 20 and 30 years ago or when I was growing up. And we did this yesterday. Uh, it was the Great American Smokeout Day. And so we were chatting about, you know, quitting smoking. And I did I did that 25 years ago. And so I started wondering, uh, well, what did a pack of cigarettes cost 25 <laughs> years ago? Because right now there's six or seven bucks a pack depending on what you want to smoke, seven bucks for the ones that I smoked. Mm -hmm. They were $1.69 back when I first quit. Wow. And that translates to everything. I mean, we, we were talking gas prices. When I started driving, gas was 35 cents, 40 cents a gallon. Um, you know, and look what it is now. Those things, um, I guess what I want to say is, is when you're at a point where your income is zero, Think sure. of how, what a staggering obstacle that is to just survive. Whereas, you know, before you might be able to get around if you could scrape up 35 cents for gas, mm -hmm. you know, you could get around a little bit. But now all of a sudden, you know, you need two and a half, three bucks for gas. Sure. And uh, and you need you know, a lot of money for food. And, and it, so I guess what I'm saying is, is the vulnerable people in our society and community more vulnerable than ever just because of the sheer inflation difference. Right, and, and we see so many employed folks who are in our homeless shelters, and that's interesting to me. Studies say that something like two and a half full-time minimum wage jobs are what's required to afford a medium apartment. Um, and that's interesting to me as well. So you're right about cost of things going up. Um, at the Haven, you know, we serve somewhere between 68,000 and 70,000 meals a year. You know, in your own homes, you know, a dinner meal for four or five people, even if you're going and buying a bag of potatoes and, you know, hamburger and things like that, is going to cost you eight, nine, ten bucks mm -hmm. to serve four people. And it's interesting to me that, you know, you think of 70,000 meals a year rather than just four meals. Uh, you can do the math on that. And that's one of our most expensive ministries is feeding people. And we are very proud that nobody goes away from the Haven hungry. It, and, you know, that's just one of the things you do. I mean, uh, 
Right. You, you've already alluded to a lot of it, and, and that's trying to find out the root causes and maybe get in front of some of this. We don't quite have uh, so many people needing your services. Right. I mean, providing that shelter and that food and the basics of living, I mean, that's blocking and tackling when you really think about it. As a kind of a, a metaphor for just the basics, you really have to provide those, and we do that in an excellent manner. Um, we take care of you know, somewhere between 2,300 and 2,400 people every year. So on a given night down there at the Haven of Rest, you might have 130 or 140 people, maybe a little bit more lately. Sure, yeah. I, I checked in with our men's shelter manager yesterday, and we had 43 people, and we have 38 beds. Now, there's there are no doubling up or anything like that. This is in the men's shelter. We put down uh, cots. We put down mattresses on the floor, and, and we're not going to turn anybody away that's coming in from the cold. But, yeah, our capacity uh, already here in November has been kind of approached and reached. Yeah, wow. And this has been, uh, the Haven of Rest has been serving this population, what, since the mid-50s, yeah, early 1956. Early 1956. So yep. that's a long, wouldn't it be great, though, if in a couple of years we had a news story of today, <laughs> Haven of Rest, and in as much house, closed their doors, the property was placed for sale as the community no longer needs the services of the homeless shelter, and uh, and uh, there are no more drug problems in right. Calhoun County. Uh, <laughs> That'd be something. Well, we could hope, but um, I don't think it's going to happen. So I guess what we need to continue to do is work to combat the problem and work to help those people who are in misery. Right. Well, I would love to be out of business. I mean, that would <laughs> that would require me to go find something else to do, and I would be happy to do that. Um, sure. But... You know, when we, you, you just mentioned it, you know, the drug problems and things like that. There is an opioid epidemic in our community, in our county, and we in Kalamazoo are probably some of the worst counties in Michigan in terms of prevalence of these drugs. Have and you seen the impact a lot down there uh, in the last couple of years or it so? It is tearing at the very fiber uh, of the homeless problem. I mean, that's, that's a real root cause. That's one of the reasons we've continued and, and pursue these life recovery programs that we have to address people who are in that crisis of addiction and to help them through. Both of those programs, our men's and women's, are very active, very, very full. Uh, we get two or three applications for every spot we have available. And, you know, the duration of that program and the intensity of it leads us to some successful outcomes. And we're excited every time a you know, person graduates from that program. Hmm. It's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful thing. So That is great. I, you know, with any nonprofit organization, you know, funding is always a challenge and there's always a cycle where it ebbs and flows and mm -hmm. problems creep up and, uh, you know, and it, it, you need extra help. And, and the Battle Creek Community Foundation really came through for you guys a couple of years ago and hit a little stumbling block. And they still do. I mean, I can't sing their praises enough. The Community Foundation uh, reached out to us and supported us through our crisis, which was a little over a year ago. Um, they actually loaned us about $50,000 so we could make payroll and pay our mm -hmm. bills and utility bills and things like that. I am happy to report that this year, uh, last month in October, I handed them the last check to pay that loan completely back. Oh, fantastic. So that's all part of our financial sustainability plan that we built and, and really put into effect. And it's a long-term plan. It's easily two and a half years. So we're probably a year into it right now. Uh, going on to June of 2020, when we kind of reached that goal where we're shooting for, for financial sustainability. And that, you know, includes some level of giving from the community, but, you know, we're not going to be going through situations where we have negative budgets or anything like that. Definitely. The uh, cold weather sneaked up on us, Daniel Jones, and um, that's probably why you've seen capacity and over capacity and people who need a warm place to stay at the uh, Haven of Rest and Innismatch House. Yeah, at this time of year, we always see um, a rise in our population and it's it's predictable. It's seasonal. Sure. Um, you know, kind of, you know, people down in Miami, Florida right now, you know, they, they don't have the same set of problems. They have some of the same problems, but boy, homelessness is very serious when you get up this far north. Yeah, it is. And uh, our community is no different than anybody else across, you know, top of the United States. This time of year, um, to be able to come in where it's warm and be able to share a meal, um, 
you know, we are a faith-based, Christ-centered ministry, and so we also get that opportunity to share a gospel message with folks, and that's important too. When they're going through a recovery or building a new kind of a life, if they have that foundation, and we can offer the start of that foundation for them, uh, that's important too. So, well, it, it combats one of the biggest problems, and that's isolation. You know, people True. that feel yeah. like there's no hope and that they're all alone. Uh, they can come there. They can get a spiritual message. They can meet people who are there to help them. Sure. Uh, meet other people who are kind of in the same boat, and they can share ideas and concerns. That, it kind of lessens it. Uh, it, it. It's sort of like when you're walking on thin ice. If you spread out and uh, and 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 distribute that weight over a greater surface area, then you, you can survive it. And that's kind of what you're doing. But you do have long-term plan to right. try and and make it better than ever. Well, yeah, we just touched on it a little bit ago. I mean, that long-term plan we put in place it goes all the way to June of 2020, and that's restructuring some of the ministries that we have going on. We're going to, uh, next year, early next year, end one of our transitional housing programs, um, which was, you know, six or seven apartments and it had good results. Um, the HUD grant that was supporting that has gone to a different kind of a uh, venue. It's going to a different type of housing for homelessness. It's not being lost by our community, but it's, it's transitioning mm -hmm. uh, away from the Havens ministry. So, we're going to lose that kind of a little ministry, but we're investing in our other ministries. We're looking at our life recovery programs, especially because they are so critically needed in this community in the substance abuse treatment sector. We've done some restructuring in there. We've invested in it. I've sent most of my staff to recovery coach training, and that's including staff on our desks at the, the shelters so that they can really have the tools to work with people that are coming in, I, even if they're to the shelters, not in our programs, just to the shelters to work with them in recovery because it's so prevalent in our community. It's this, these kind of ministries, the life recovery programs are just critically needed. So within that long-term plan, uh, keeping those programs alive and vital and staffed, and, uh, and gosh, I'm proud of our staff. I mean, my son is even on the staff down at the Haven of Rest now, my son, David, uh, who's still going to school at Western, but working in our adult foster care and veterans program. He's, he's a pretty cool kid. That's great. That's great. So uh, I uh, happen to notice a pretty big article in the shopper. Right. And uh, an envelope uh, that also fell out of the shopper when I opened it. <laughs> we send out about 35,000 envelopes to the community this time of year. And yes, and yesterday's shopper was the Haven of Rest fundraising appeal. And it's an annual appeal. Uh, that's part and parcel of this annual and long-term plan we've built, the, the two and a half year plan. I mean, this time of year, we reach to the community. We, we seek support, remember the homeless at Christmas, um, remember a gift. Um, and the financial gift keeps us going through January, February, March, really when uh, there's not a lot of fundraising going on. But at the same time, our utility bills are probably the highest that we get in a year. So it's, it's important. We'll reach out through the Battle Creek Inquirer on Sunday with the same kind of an appeal letter and an envelope. Makes it easy to put a nice check in there and mail it right back to us. And uh, boy, we can sure use the support this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we do the roof sit in June. That was six months ago. Right. And so uh, now the end of the year appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, I probably should know this, but. I, are there still tax advantages to, to doing this, or is the tax code changed? How does that figure in? People probably wonder. It changed a little bit, and if you're itemizing your deductions, I think still, you know, you'd probably have to consult your tax advisor, but I think there's still, still some benefit. Mm -hmm. If you're not itemizing, um, then, yeah, I think some of that tax benefit has gone away. Um, again, look to your tax advisor on all that stuff. That's, if you're giving to get a tax, you know, deduction, you know, that's a wonderful place to be in, and I'm I'm glad you're in that spot. I think it's an opportunity for people to give out of their heart and really to show some care for their fellow human beings here at Christmas time. Even five bucks, think I, you know, that'll feed a few people because you yeah, guys sure are, will. you know, work with the food bank and other organizations, so you know you can really get a bang for the buck there. And just think what a hundred dollars would do. How many people that would feed? How True. how much yep. heat that could buy for? 
you know, 40 or 50 people who otherwise would be out on the street. Yeah, well, when you mentioned bang for the buck, I mean, to the extent the Haven is there and serving and bringing people in and, and helping them build their lives back up and really make changes and create change in this place, I think the Haven is one of the most impactful agencies in town in terms of reaching the most vulnerable, like you mentioned, the mm -hmm. most vulnerable people, women, children, uh, you know, folks who are just at the very end of themselves and turning them around and helping. Yep. And, and people who uh, a year or two ago, you know, seemed to be doing okay. And then all of a sudden, you know, they get into a little problem with prescription drugs or mm -hmm. their car dies or they lose a job through no fault of their own. And all of a sudden, oh, yeah. the balance completely changes. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a lifeline for those people to get them back up and going. Yeah. You know, not to change the subject, I mean, back in September, we saw a very large homeless encampment protest in Kalamazoo, right mm -hmm. in their downtown. Right. And kind of took over Bronson Park and made the news. You know, we have, I think we have probably an equal amount of homeless uh, people wandering and, and kind of working in our community, but they're not as visible. They didn't take over the downtown park. They didn't, you know, and there's, you know, there's a couple different reasons for that. And I think the Haven being the kind of a ministry that it is and available to people and listening to people and uh, really responsive to their needs. I right. think that makes a big difference. No, I think it, it, it does because when people are desperate and their backs are to the wall, yeah. uh, all it takes is one, you know, one or two things said the wrong way, and all of a sudden, uh, yeah. people people get very defensive. And so it's a it's a testament to Haven of Rest Ministries that you know since 1956, we've been able to be a positive force in this community. Yep, true story. And I think. Underlying some of the Kalamazoo tensions are needs in affordable housing, and we have those same needs here in Battle Creek. And that's a bigger, probably a bigger problem that maybe in the years 2020 and beyond we'll talk about a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a need in this community for affordable housing. We've been demolishing homes by the hundreds, and I don't think we've been building probably five or six maybe. Sure. You know, with the units in the last couple of years. Had the big apartment fire right downtown there, and that's sure. sitting empty. That's you know. gone whole bunch of people were displaced there. Yep. So today, the uh, the shopper that came out yesterday has yep. the article and the envelope there. And then Sunday, the Battle Creek Inquirer will have an envelope. And uh, how else can we contribute to the, uh, the uh, year-end fund? You know, the year-end fundraising, our, our address is 11 Green Street, or we're online at thehavenbc.org. All of those places are great places to make connections to us. You can go online, make that donation easy over our PayPal kind of activated donation page. Okay. That'll come right to us electronically. That's a fast way to do it. We love that. Um, but yeah, send that envelope back to us and, and prayerfully consider a gift of support for the Haven this year. Daniel Jones, will you stop back uh, and give us some updates here in the next month or so as we uh, get down toward the end of the year? I would love to. Have a great Thanksgiving. All right. You too.